Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm just gonna do a little get ready with me, put on a little makeup, because <laughs> I need just a little bit of color. Um, I wanna know how you're doing. I can't believe it's October already. Let me know in the comments down below what your plans are for this month. If you have any fantastic ideas, um, for the, for like activities, things you're gonna do. My kids are looking forward to um, a corn maze. There's always a corn maze here in our town. Uh, we live in kind of, it's a little tiny town, so it's not really the country, but it's pretty close. Like you go two miles that way and you're off in a wheat field or you're off at a cornfield or there's lentils or there's soybeans or there's alfalfa. Like there's a lot of agriculture around where we live. Um, so of course there's a corn maze. My kids love doing that. And since it's an outdoor activity, it's fun to do with friends. I'm gonna start by putting on just a little bit of under eye corrector. I have firmly fallen in love with this stuff from Beauty Pie. Oh my goodness. This is the super, lumin super luminous under eye genius. And I feel like it makes such a big difference. It's not very heavy at all, but the difference between this and this, like, it's a lot. And if I feel like if I can just target it to where I have the most darkness, it's just super amazing. It's, it's kind of a big deal. I think the last time I was filming, it was still warm enough to not be in like a sweater and the weather turned real fast. And I don't know, we might have an, you know, another couple of days of warmth. Might, I think I was planning on putting on liquid foundation today. Well, let's blend this in and if we need to add, we'll add. So I spent a week with my mom and dad in Ohio. And by the time I got back, it was kind of late September. And I left and it was warm. And six days later when I was back, it was like, wait, what? <laughs> what happened? We didn't have temperatures above 70. I could not believe it. And ever since then, the temperatures have just continued to stay cool. Because normally, um, we have warm, beautiful weather, probably until mid-October. And by the time, you know, Halloween hits, temperatures could be anywhere between like 45 and 70 degrees. And for somebody who lives in the Pacific Northwest, that's still, you know, I can go outside in a sweater and be just fine. But it's cold today. It was like 50 degrees. <laughs> like, what happened to my weather? So I started pulling out the sweaters. It was just barely the beginning of October, but I guess it's gonna be that sort of a year. I have not worn this Charlotte Tilbury foundation in a long time, um, well, months. I normally, this used to be like my favorite lightweight foundation and I haven't worn it forever. So I thought it was time to pull it out again. So this foundation did survive my foundation to clutter and I haven't used it in a while, mainly because there was just so much I forgot what I had. And my goal, I was like, you know, now that I've decluttered more than half my collection, it's time to start, you know, using what I've kind of rediscovered in my daily. So I'm glad to be reaching for this. I am reaching for a couple of other products I haven't used in a while. I'm excited to see if I still like them a lot. I remember when I first got this, I was like, I don't like this. It's too expensive for what it is. I still think it's rather expensive. This is the under eye setting powder from um, Pat McGrath and I would read you what it says on the back, but it's worn off because I have used it that much. Uh, but this is the under eye setting powder. I feel like it, it does a good job. The more I use it, the more I kind of reach for it daily. And I'm always one of those people, I feel like if I'm reaching for something over and over and over again, it's because it really works for me. And I feel like, yes, this really works for me and I think it's really lovely. Have not used this in a while, so I am going to grab a clean brush. Uh, this is one of those really interesting formulas, this backstage powder, no powder. I feel like it looks really beautiful on the skin. The problem I tend to have is that um, I, I struggle sometimes to pick it up because it is a, I think it's a baked gelée formula. It's not the same as just a regular pressed powder. There's something different about it. And I feel like it picks up best when I'm using a natural hair brush like this. I feel like that really does make all the difference in the world. If I'm using a synthetic brush, I really, really, really struggle. I'm gonna use the Patrick Ta Contouring Duo. I think I'm just gonna hit the bronzer today. Um, we're not that far away from 
Halloween. And I remember when my kids were younger, they're 11 and 13 right now. Their birthdays are both in March. So we're getting close to them being like 12 and 14. I feel like they're just at that age. My oldest doesn't go trick or treating anymore. Um, I think the last time she went trick or treating, she was 12, 11. She went in 2019. She was 11. She didn't go in 2020 and she won't go this year. She feels like she's too old for it. So my kids really enjoy, and I always tell them, hey, you don't have to go trick-or-treating to enjoy Halloween candy. Don't you know that for years, your dad and I would send you guys to bed and then we'd raid your Halloween candy stash. We'd like get those big orange pumpkins and be like digging in there for all the goodies. Uh, we wouldn't eat too much. The kids would never notice. They're like, what? I'm like, so we'll buy whatever, what's your favorite? And so I always get a bag of, you know, each person's favorite candy. Um, but I have to be careful. Last year, since it was like hardcore quarantine, we weren't going anywhere, we weren't seeing anyone, we weren't doing anything, the kids were doing distance learning. I just kind of got candy like in late August and we just kept eating and replenishing, eating and replenishing. And by the time Halloween rolled around, we'd gone through I don't know how many bags of candy. It was not, it was not good. So this year I have promised everybody in the house, everyone made me promise, that I would not buy Halloween candy until just a little bit before, but you can't wait till like the week of, or even like a week or two before. You have to get it like early to mid October or all the good stuff is gone. And then it's just like, just the gross candy. <laughs> and maybe I shouldn't say gross candy, the stuff my family doesn't prefer because everybody, they wouldn't sell it if people didn't buy it and they wouldn't sell it if people didn't like it. It's just not what I like. My family tends to like chocolate chocolate with caramel, things that are crunchy, or sour candies. And I feel like that right there means a lot of stuff, but we're not big candy corn people, or what are those uh, little pumpkins, like the Brock's pumpkins that have the same sort of consistency as candy corn. I've never really loved that type of candy. So I'm gonna be using the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic. This is the shade Sex on Fire. I love this shade. I love how it's just enough and it's not too much. I always end up with clown cheeks because I love a blush. I grew up in the 80s. I was all about the, the drapey blush, but um, I like wearing stuff and it not being too much. And I feel like this is a beautiful formula. You do have two shades in here. You can hit just the center or you can hit the outside ring. I just always blend it together unless I'm using a more precise brush, but this one's kind of big and chunky, so I just, Sweep it on. I think it's so funny that the minute I finally, finally break down and get a Dior highlight, like three months later, they come out with like a whole new formula. And I was like, ah. This is the Dior Skin Nude Luminizer in 01. It is really pretty. It's a gorgeous shade, but it's not the new formulation. Sometimes that happens. It's kind of like an adventure today because I'm reaching for stuff that I haven't used in a while. Like I haven't used this in a while, the blush, that Patrick Ta bronzer. The Charlotte Tilbury <laughs> foundation. It's like all the things I forgot I had. The great part about doing this makeup declutter is I get rid of all the stuff that is kind of taking up space that I'm not reaching for. And then I, I feel like I'm overwhelmed. I pull out the drawer and I see like way too much stuff and I can't hone in on what I really love. And so I know what I love. I just have to take time to get rid of the rest. I'm surprised that we're already to early October and all of the holiday stuff has been releasing since late August, mid to late August, and I just haven't pulled the trigger on anything. I did recently purchase the new monochromatic eyeshadow palette from Glossier, just one. They have like 10 like different series and um, I got the olive one. When it comes in, I'll make sure and it might already, I don't know. I don't know when this video is going up, when that product is going to arrive, but I really um, was curious about it overall. Boy, this is looking really pretty. I like it. Let's put some brows on them. Uh, but I will do a video for that Glossier, and if I already have, I will like it for you there. Now that I got my brows on, I'm gonna dig into this. I haven't used this in a while because this cutie palette from Nabla, although I love the shades in here, this is the Metropolitan one. I, Metropolis, I think it's Metropolis. The problem I've had is that I get a lot of sparkle fallout, but I have something to work with that today. So I'm gonna start by, um, what do I wanna, you know what? I think I'm gonna use this kind of burgundy shade here. I know it's a, 
it's a shimmer, we're just gonna put it in the crease anyway. We're gonna break all the rules today. My house has been a little bit kind of up in the air for the past month. Early, I guess it was Labor Day weekend, my husband and I had this genius idea. He had the week off, the whole week of like Labor Day was on a Monday, he had that whole week off from work that since we were getting flooring put in on the 30th of September and the first of the month, that we were going to just demo the floors. And we started doing it and it was a process, but we have been living on bare floors, like subfloors, press board, particle board, whatever it is for the last month. Finally got the flooring put in, excited to have that done, but we have to paint and we have to uh, reapply all of the baseboards. The baseboards got a little dinged up, of course. So I was like, let's paint them while they're on. <laughs> and before they can get painted, they needed to be sanded. They needed to have all the extra caulking removed. I just didn't think it through because I don't do home improvements. My husband does it and I cook, I clean, I, you know, make costumes for the kids if they need them for Halloween or for school projects. I am like the handy crafty lady in the house. I am not the DIY lady in the house. And so my husband was like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we did all this demo ourselves and that we moved the furniture ourselves and we took off the baseboards and you're gonna put them all back on. But he's like, it saved us a lot of money, but <laughs> sweetheart, you can't just do it all at the same time. I'm like, really? like no 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 um so he's such a good egg he's willing to do whatever i ask for that he's like you just i just need time i can't do it all at the same time and i didn't never done it before i've never even seen it done so i don't know how long it takes i wish i had known now a professional can come in here if the floors are completely demoed just you know click in all the flooring cut everything to fit perfectly and be done so there's a little bit of putting the house back together and it still looks, the flooring looks great, but it's so unfinished without the baseboards in. That's gonna take a little bit, but I wanna get it done before the end of the month. I'm tired of living in a house that looks like we don't care. I'm gonna use this dark brown here, just a little bit in the outside corner to make it just a little bit deeper. It never occurred to me to um, record any of the demo process or the installation process of getting the floors in but i can show you if you're curious just let me know in the comments down below and in a future get rid of me i'll, I'll show you like before during and after pictures <laughs> um i love that um i have such a handy husband he can do just about anything um and it, it's great because it saves us, you know, a little extra and we can still get some things done. He painted the whole outside of the house last year, like did it all. It looks spectacular. Like he could, literally can do anything. He can hang drywall. He can change up sinks, um, bathtubs, like all the plumbing stuff. Like if you need something fixed, he can fix it. But I try not to, since he works full time, to ask him to, he probably could have installed the flooring too, but he'd never done it before. He's like, I just watch a YouTube video. That's what I did when I was painting the house. So I didn't ask him to put the flooring in. I probably could have, and it would have saved us even more, but I, I didn't want to wait. Last year when he painted the outside of our house, it took like five weeks from start to finish. And seeing the house covered in plastic and partially sprayed killed me a little bit every single day. And that's just the outside of the house. In the middle of quarantine, I really wasn't going out. I knew it was happening, but I didn't really have to see it. But living in this house with the floors demoed has really been difficult for me. And I was like, I, I can't live in a space that's always in transition. I need it to start and I need it to end. I need to know when that is going to be. And for me, we're just down to that little nitpicky, make sure the baseboards are perfect before they go back up. Because if they're not, it's just going to drive me crazy. But thankfully, he is super indulgent, willing to do whatever I ask, and super handy because like the man can literally do anything. The reason I really struggled with this palette before was because all of the sparkles and the super shimmery shades ended up across my cheekbones, on my blouse, stuck in my lipstick, and it really bothered me. So today, I'm gonna try this palette again. I am using the Pat McGrath Artistry Wand. This is the Intensifies Artistry Wand. But I'm going to swipe a little bit of this on my eye. And then I'm gonna place this shade right over the top. I am so pleased to say I don't have a single sparkle underneath my eye. <laughs> I love this thing. You know what I just realized? I don't have any of this gold on and I intended to. Where can I put this? 
I'm gonna take a minute to put on some mascara and liner and I'll be right back. So I finished the eye look with the ColourPop liner in Joyride and the L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara in Burgundy. I thought it'd be kind of fun to do kind of like a more colorful liner mascara and it's deep enough that you really can't tell but I know and it makes me happy. But let's put on some lipstick. I, mm, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna start with the Wayne Goss liner in the shade Cinnamon. This might be a little deep, but we're gonna make it work. I normally would not go with a liner this deep with kind of this intense eye, but I'm kind of living for it. I was thinking, do I want to go with like a, let's do this. Oh, this is the YSL Tattooage Couture Matte Lip Stain. And uh, what shade is this? This is shade number eight. So I am going all for fall. Uh, I love this kind of maroon sparkly eye with the deep lip and it, it it's probably too much and I don't care at all. I am really, really enjoying this. I think it looks really fun and I'm going to take my little mug of tea with me and go about my day, but I hope you're doing really well. Let me know in the comments down below how October is treating you. I would also love to know if you have anything specific you're planning to do for Halloween. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm trying to do with my kids who are a little bit older who are starting to feel like they're too old to trick or treat and probably wouldn't have the patience to hand out candy like for hours at a time. So I don't know what we're doing. If you have any ideas, um, if your kids are the same age, grandkids are the same age, if your kids have been that age and you know how to handle that transition out of the dressing up and into just the staying home and eating candy, let me know. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to tell me how your October is going. I will see you again soon and have a fantastic day.